Hey team YouTube. So, 2005 Buick Rendezvous. 3.4, uh, 3.5, well, that's a different story. All wheel drive. Leaky supply fuel line. Leaky fuel return line. This is one of those two. The other one looks just about like it. How can you get a hard line <laughs> into your vehicle? Well, well, let me show you. Hey Team YouTube. So, you want to remove everything on this side of the motor. Here's your motor. You will have a 3400. I have a kit that gives me a 3500, but that's a different story. You'll have your uh, throttle body uh, bracket right there. You got to take that off. You got to take off the uh, uh, intake bellows there. You have to take off your air box. You also have to take off bum, ba, da, ba, ba, your ABS module. You're going to say, hey, how do I take off my ABS module? Let me show you here. So I have the ABS module bracket. Under the side of the wheel well, you will have three fasteners. I hope yours aren't rusted to all crap. You have one that sticks out, then you have uh, a couple more that fasten in all right and your ABS module has a bolt right here that runs across it has two nuts one on either side Ooh, that's from a different pair sorry and here it just sits down on that peg right there and the bolt goes through that way it's vibration isolated it's a pretty cool idea but yeah you just literally loosen those two nuts and boop, pop that off and here's everything else got your air box, you got your air filter, you got the thing, you got your uh, bellows right there. Oh, and you also have to take off all of your brake lines, including the two feeders from master cylinder. And you know what? It wouldn't hurt to take off the master cylinder too. Now remember, this is a power steering uh, line, supply and return line. Excuse me. This is a fuel return and supply line video. But yet here we are having to pull all of this brake stuff off. Oh, here's the throttle body. Pay no attention to that fog light. That's from a different vehicle entirely. So let's talk about what else you might want to consider doing. Oh, let's see. Do to do. Oh yes, you also have the crash bar. That'll can come off. And the last thing to get some more room is you will want to take a front jack, like that one there. You will want to loosen your front and your rear cradle bolts. That's an 18 millimeter on the front. Uh, socket and a 21 in the back and you will want to actually lower your cradle a bit uh, the hand that rocks the cradle or really idle the cradle of love or whatever oh and also this brake line here it looks famously impossible because this uh, rear brake line that runs through by the way that's a uh, fuel uh, fitting there that needs to get hooked back up uh, this looks impossibly hard to get around because literally it's sitting if you can imagine you know, the power steering line sit behind this guy back up next to the firewall. So, truly colossal pain in the butt. But as you can see here from the shiny, shiny new uh, insulator stuff there on the fuel line and the very hot potential uh, exhaust pipe that comes through here, that's why it's all, you know, you got that, that insulation stuff there on it. Um, it's not impossible to get it, it's just very hard. So, uh, lots of stuff you have to detach. Let's go back up top real quick. Oh boy. Uh, old man alert. One of the things you will copiously have to disassemble is you have to take off these little three-way uh, line holder things. And you also have those on those cotton pit, pick and brake lines down there. So, yeah, you'll have to, and I actually, that one you can see that brake line down there. I detached it and now it's just kind of fallen kind of loose. But you can see when it's back up, it's right up next to the firewall. It looks like it holds those in place. It doesn't hold them. It's just smashed right up against them. So yeah, this is a colossal pain in the butt. And uh, well, we might take another video just to give you a few more tips. Notice there's missing master cylinder right there. You got your uh, vacuum booster just sitting there all pretty as a picture without it. I'm wondering if that thing's leaking a tiny bit. I sure hope not. But either way, uh, on with the repair. Hey, Team YouTube. 
I'm just getting beat up by repairs lately. One little quick video to finish out the uh, fuel hardline repair. Uh, just a couple of tips. You have four of those plastic uh, three uh, three-way holders. Okay, one goes on the firewall right there and the order of the tubes coming from front of car to back is big fuel line, okay, little fuel line, and then vent line, okay. And it's a pain in the butt trying to get those suckers hooked back up, uh, the push on things. Make sure when you push them on that um, you uh, can get the little holder clips, you know, on all the way. Those should snap on. Don't the, that's not optional to, to to have those off. But then you know you got a fully inserted. <laughs> so um, all back together, and you will absolutely have to bleed the brakes on the on your vehicle because it ain't going anywhere with empty brake lines and then the uh, ABS module that has lots of air vents on the uh, output side of the. Um, <clears throat> Of, of the fittings there. So I'm only hopeful that uh, it's gonna, I'm gonna get my brake bleeder out and do all that. Let's look under the car real quick here. Okay, Team YouTube, here we are. The plastic lines that go to the fuel tank. Here is the fuel filter. Okay, here is the colossally hard to get back together um, fuel line uh, here. Um, I did put some cable ties on it because it didn't feel like it snapped in very tight. Uh, but going forward, okay, there's the big fuel supply line that goes into the fuel filter. So that flows to the engine. You got them spiffy uh, little uh, uh, foil blanket things that protect the, uh, the thing there. And then you have the, uh, the clamp here that uh, holds everything together. Again, the order is the uh, two, uh, well, you have the big fuel line towards the outside, and then the two little fuel lines, the, the return line and the vent line. The vent line's way up at the top. And then you have those, uh, those three ways. You have four of those. One of them is up at the top of the firewall. One is down where they take a corner, where the, they turn 90 and then shoot downwards. Uh, you want to get one pushed up there against the firewall, it just floats, because you don't want these fuel lines to rub, especially the you know, the metal to rub metal on metal um, anywhere. So I just picked what I thought was the likeliest. I also used some uh, uh, cable ties right there. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I don't think this line was formed quite right uh, from the factory because there's just a, a tiny little kink in the line right here. I mean, it's plastic. It can, it can fold a little bit, but it's definitely not free. So I put some cable ties on there just so you'd have some, uh, you know, some plastic where it would, it would rub you know, in case these are actually pretty clear on the uh, on the, the the bottom here pan of the of the car. So um, this was a truly um, hard repair. I might go with those uh, um, the, the the braided steel stuff next time, or I would try something else. Um, I would definitely not recommend. You know, right where it was leaking it was right at the bend here. And of course, that's wait, what's that? The hot exhaust pipe there. There's, there's a reason for these little foil blanket things, uh, very much so. I wouldn't just do a plastic or, or a rubber uh, fuel hose with, with clamps repair. That's just that's asking for problems. Um, so would I do this again? I'm I'm in favor of of hard lines. I'm in favor of doing it right. Um, but. Uh, those those uh, you know uh, flex lines look look pretty convenient and uh, you know but you still have to support them. I guess that's all I got. I'm just going to sit here under this car and ramble a while, pretending uh, that I'm actually doing work. Yeah, just kidding, YouTube. Hope this uh, somebody finds this video helpful. Have a great day.